Good evening, and I love you. I'm Heather Peterson Lockhart, and I am the Chief Diss. I'm going to sit here for a second, because I just popped this up, and I'm going to see who joins us. And then I'm going to chat with y'all about some basic nutrition info, so that you can learn some easy stuff and um, start taking better charge of your health and make yourself feel better and look younger and have more energy. And like yourself more. Yes. Yes. It's all of that. <laughs> How's everybody doing this evening? Um, let's see here. It's Tuesday. Um, I don't have anything. There's nothing that's like, uh, well, I was going to say astrological. There's a whole lot. There's a whole lot. But that's just life right now, isn't it? That's like, that's everyday life. There's a whole lot going on every day in life right now, isn't there? It seems like more than ever before. In fact, that's probably a good place to start. Um, <clears throat> there are more demands on the human body today than possibly ever before. Let's say that. I hadn't even thought about that. Uh, but energetically, um, because of the way our food is by the time it gets to us, because of what's going on in the world today, there are more demands on the human body, I would say, than possible. Well, I don't know if I can't say ever before. That's not the truth because there's been lots of crazy times on earth, hasn't there? But let's just say that there's a lot going on right now that affects the human. And so it is a really good idea for us to take better care of ourselves. So lately I have received quite a few questions about nutrition and about losing weight and about starting a fitness and nutrition program and so I'm going to answer some of the questions that I have had multiple times since several people have asked me I thought I might as well just make a video so that y'all can um, get the info at the same time so to start with let's do as we do and um, let's take a second and let's breathe so I have my lovely oh I hit it already Excuse me, my heart frequency um, Tibetan singing bowl. And I'm going to play this for a second and we'll take a couple deep breaths. And then I will get into talking. But I know that some of you haven't taken a deep breath today. I know this will be the first time that you breathe deeply. So won't you join me? Ready? Close your eyes, if you will. You can go ahead and take your left hand on your heart. And then put your right hand on your left. Okay, and then you can feel your heart. You can feel your lungs. Go ahead and close your eyes. Let's take a big breath in through our nose. Ready? And exhale through your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Big inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. And say, I love you. To you and all it is. And I love you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so I'm going to give you some real basics to, um, to start with tonight. Um, some, some real basics that some of you might not know. Okay, so to begin with, when you're going to start losing weight, um, a bunch of people ask me, should I do cardio? Should I lift weights? Should I get on the keto diet? Should I stop eating carbohydrates? All these questions, right? <clears throat> So I'm going to give you some generalizations that, of course, don't apply for everyone. But these are generalizations that, um, that tend to happen for most men and women when they decide to start a fitness and nutrition program. And I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, I'll give you guys some more background, uh, some more information on my background in, in coming videos. I'm going to give you some more detail about how long I've been doing this and how I've been doing this and who I've worked with and um, how I have... Uh, got to where I am today. So for today though, we're just going to do some generalizations because like I said, I had a whole lot of questions in this week and so I actually responded more than once. I'm just going to make a video. So here you are. Okay, 
average Jane and average Joe decide to lose weight, right? And you send them to the gym. Well, average Jane will get on a piece of cardio equipment and average Joe will lift weights, right? And even within maybe about two weeks, two weeks will go by and Joe will be like puffing his chest and, you know, kind of feeling good about himself. And Jane's like, you know, feeling a little more energy, but she's not really noticing her body changing too much. Three weeks go by. Joe's looking a little bit different. Jane's starting to fuss. She's like, all Joe did was stop eating, drinking soda and go to the gym. And now he looks better and he's da na 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 right? <clears throat> and she's probably lost like three pounds at this point. But her body hasn't changed too much. But he hasn't lost any weight, but his body looks like it's changed a whole lot, okay? So we get into, get into weeks four and five, and then the results are even more drastic and more noticeable. And Joe's really feeling good. Joe's chest is puffed up and his posture is better. His belly is smaller. He's standing more upright. He's feeling stronger. He's noticing the difference in his body as he works and as he moves with what he lifts and how he moves around. He's feeling good about himself. Jane's lost about six pounds. She's a little smaller in the waistline. She is feeling more energetic. She's happy with herself that she is doing this program, but she's not by any means where she wants to be, right? And she's still squishy in all the same places, okay? So by the time we get into week seven and eight, what we have is a gentleman who has a markedly different physique and a woman who has the same physique, only a smaller size. She's still squishy in all the same places, okay? Because what happened when they went to the gym was Joe made an investment in his body, much like a mutual fund. He chose to lift weights and to build muscle mass. And so he changed his body composition and now his body burns more calories for him. Where Jane went to the gym and she did a bunch of, cal uh, a bunch of cardio, so she expended she spent a whole bunch of calories. She ran her little butt off and she ran those calories off, right? However, she didn't build any more muscle mass on her body. So the only calories she's losing are the ones on the treadmill or on the Stairmaster or however it is that Jane is choosing to lose weight. Whereas Joe's body now has become this calorie burning machine because he's all filled with muscle, yo, right? So... Anything Joe does, he burns more calories now because a body with more muscle mass, you know, muscle burns up to four times as many calories. It can burn up to four times as many calories as, um, as a body in a relaxed state. So if you've got a muscular body, if you've got two bodies that are both 200 pounds, both the same weight, sitting on a couch, doing nothing, right? Watching television, okay? And this body is very conditioned. They've got a lot of muscle mass. They're in really good shape, right? And this body is not that way. This body is 200 pounds and not a lot of muscle mass. And this body is sitting here watching television. These two bodies weigh the same. And yet this body is burning up to four times as many calories as this body is. Even just sitting there watching television because of what this body is made of. All right. So when Joe went to the gym, he made an investment in his health and an investment in his body in a, in a in a multitude of ways. He created a body that's going to continue to burn more calories for him as he continues on this lifestyle. Where Jane, she's going to have to do more and more cardio and it's going to be a trick with consuming enough fuel coming in and burning enough so that she's getting the nutrients and the calories that she needs to nourish her body and yet burning enough that she continues to lose weight and attempt to attain her fitness goals. And chances are, if she wants to really look different, that's not gonna work for her for too long because she's going to, um, like I said, she's gonna get smaller. She might go from like a size 12 to a size eight, right? But she's still gonna be squishy in all the same places because she didn't change her body composition. So what's the answer? What's the answer to this when we're starting? Do we want cardio or weights? The answer is you want both. That's the easy answer. I'll make, I've made other videos. I'll direct you to them online with more information about that. But the easy answer to start off is you, you want a mix of both. You want to do cardio for a whole bunch of reasons that are different from lifting weights. And you put those together 
<clears throat> excuse me, and you get a good mix. We want to build muscle mass by lifting weights, and we want to have the benefits of cardio, which are, geez, yes, we burn fat, yes, we um, amp up our metabolism, we exercise our heart, we work our muscles in a different way, we, you know, improve the flexibility and integrity of our joints. There's a whole bunch of things that happen. So it's not a one or the other thing. It becomes how do you mix them both in the best way to achieve your personal results? And those are questions that I would answer for you individually. Okay? So I have a little cheat sheet here. Hold on. Let me see what's next. So we need to change the body composition. If we want to lose weight and you want to lose it long term. And you want to keep it off. So especially if you want to look different. If you want to look different, if you want your body to really look different, then chances are you're talking about a change in your body composition. You want to lose some body fat. You don't, you don't just want to become a smaller version of what you are, right? Some people do, but most people are looking for a big change. So, pardon me. So, we want to increase your metabolism. Now, this is another great question. Now, traditionally... In fact, in 25 years, I tell this story often. I wish I knew where this woman is today. Um, <clears throat> in 25 years, I've met one woman who ate too much. In 25 years of doing this, I've met one woman who ate too much. Most every woman is quite, and not most, every woman is the contrary. And a lot of men too. Most men, most humans are undernourished. <laughs> My personal opinion is if you've been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD, you're probably undernourished energetically. You have no idea, and that's a whole nother video. But <laughs> when we get what we need, we present in balance. We are, we're, we are in good health, we are in good spirits, we like ourselves, we like that around us, and we're able to... Uh, function in ways that are beneficial, right? We have the energy that we desire. We make choices that are good for us, right? So, um, what really, ha what happens with most women, and like I said, it's, 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 it's most people, actually. I should stop saying that because, maybe it's because I originally worked with so many women. I'm not sure, but if I really think about it, it's most people. They don't eat enough, and so they're starving their bodies, and they're starving their metabolisms, okay? Most, um, every single nutrition program in this country, except the one that, um, except the, yeah, except that, that I have created and, um, another party, um, is based on calories and portion size. So if you're talking about like Weight Watcher, Nutrisystem, E-Diet, um, all of these are based on portion size and calorie size. And the reason is because the thinking has always been, oh, if the human is fat, then the human eats too much. Limit what the human eats, and then they won't be so fat, right? But that's really erroneous because, first of all, that's assuming that everything you eat is what you need, and you're just getting too much of it, which is not the case. It's actually quite the contrary. Most of, most of these diets, they're based on a caloric amount, not a macronutrient amount, and not a content of food that meets your energetic needs. I will give you an example. Um, I am almost five foot nine. I'd love to say I'm five nine. I was five nine, we're hitting five nine again. I power lifted for years. So anyway, <laughs> about, about five foot nine and like 160 pounds. Okay. And so if you have another woman and I think I'm 7% body fat right now. So if you have another woman that is the same height as me and the same weight as me, but she does not have a lot of muscle mass. She's not in good shape. Okay. She has like probably she needs to lose some of that weight. Right. And so if you compare us, um, if we both go to this, you know, this place and we want to get on a diet, then the only information they take from us is our weight and our height 
and then they give us a diet based on that, right? It has nothing to do with our body composition. It has nothing to do with the fact that when she and I walk up a flight of stairs, I'm burning four times as many calories as she is because of the amount of muscle mass I carry. I am a walking like metabolic burning machine, right? So anything I do, I am um, expending calories where it might not be the same for this woman's body. So if you put her on this 1500 calorie diet or this 1200 calorie diet or whatever it is, and you put me on the same thing, she might do all right, but you're going to starve me to death. You're going to literally, it's going to eat my brain. My body's going to eat its own muscle because it's going to, it's going to eat. It's going to need to eat because I had this high metabolism, which is going to start to shut down. And then I'm going to start to get fat. In fact, when I don't eat enough, I get what I call skinny fat. It's like all my beautiful hard muscles get all like soft and they're just not even the same. So what happens with most of us is we think that we're going to increase our physical activity and we're going to decrease our caloric intake and we're going to lose weight. Now... If you get it just right and you get the right balance, then you will and you'll benefit. However, odds of you breaking on that I think are rather slim to none because you have to make sure that you're eating enough food that is the food you need at the right time to support your energetic output. So your training, your work, your interaction with your family, your going to school or whatever it is. And if you think that going to school does not require um, nutritional needs, let me let me give you something and see this is where this is where um, this is where my nutrition system has become so beast because I made a uh, a really successful um, nutrition program quite a few years ago that has um, serviced some of the most uh, prestigious athletes in the world. and um, and then I kind of went back to the grindstone to learn more about like ancient cultures, the way we ate, the way we lived, um, how we benefit in harmony with the earth. Like, how do we balance our biology? What do I need as a human being to thrive on planet earth, right? <clears throat> and what I learned to give you just like a, a quick sum up is that we were never taught about our energetic needs. We were just taught that we were the, are this bag of, um, you know, flesh and bones and, and blood and that I will, uh, you know, I will need a certain amount of calories to keep myself alive and that's about it, right? But depending on how you interact in life, you are energetic. And so you are interacting energetically, some of us more than others. I'll give you an example. Let's say um, I'm working with a young woman right now who's going to school. And so she every time she has like a big assignment due or a big paper, it's a lot for her, right? And and she, you know, she'll say, Oh, I have to get ready to do this. And so we will take measures to calm her energy, like meditation and walking outside and grounding. Right. And she'll talk about it, how, you know, she's going to do these things to prepare for this paper that she's going to get done or this assignment she's going to turn in. And then and what do people say? Oh, I have to prepare for this assignment. I have to get ready for this thing. Da -da 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 -da, right. And then as soon as it's completed or it's turned in, oh, I feel so much better. It's done. And I'm tired now. That took so much out of me. Right. We hear this all the time. OK, well, if you were, if you, if someone ran a few laps and then they were like, oh, that took so much out of me. I'm tired. We would be like, yeah, you just ran some laps. You need some food, right? We would get it. <laughs> that wouldn't be rocket science. But we do not seem to understand the concept of, enter, you know, entertaining and feeding our energetic needs as well. So back to what I was saying that 1,200 calories, that 1,500 calorie diet for the other woman and myself, depending on what her life is like and my life is like, are two different things. Let's say you're a mom that works shift work and has three kids and you get very little sleep. You need a buttload of calories. 
You need to be eating around the clock. You need to be eating high fat. You need to be nourishing your brain. You need to be getting all the recovery and the anti-inflammatory goodness that you can because you don't have the balance and the extra sleep you need, right? So um, it's really about fueling the body. It's not about limiting yourself, which brings me to the next thing I want to say, and then I'll answer two more questions on here. And then if you guys have questions, you can ask me as well. Um, what I'm learning and what I wanted to share tonight for people, I think this is, would you hush or I'm going to put you in your house? I took a chance with you being out here, ma'am. I am. <laughs> um, uh, Oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. Um, what I find with people when we start this is we have been, we, we venture into, okay, first of all, why are we, why are we even entering into a, a fitness or a nutrition journey? Because we're not happy with where we're at, right? We are, um, obviously thinking that we're overweight or we're not fit or, I mean, we might just have goals and want to feel better and want to be more fit, but most people are making an adjustment because they're not happy with where they're at, right? And so most people are entering this in a deficient mind state, or mindset, I'm sorry, where um, I need to do more, I need to be better, and I'm, I'm less than in a way, okay? So we're used to this no pain, no gain, it should hurt, it should be so stressful. I'm going to work so hard and eat as little as I can. I'm going to slave away and then I'll achieve my goals approach, which might be beneficial for the first two weeks. If you've been sitting on your ass, then yes, a hush. Come lay down now. Enough. Now, lay down. Lay down. Thank you. Lay down. No, ma'am. Sorry. Um... So if you've been sitting on your butt, then yeah, you know, getting up and going is going to be extremely beneficial. But if that's your mindset, uh, you're not going to last very long because you're going to break yourself off. You're going to burn out or you're going to be really upset with yourself and it's not going to be long term. So what I have found for people that like myself and a lot of people that I work with that are dealing with issues of self-worth or shame or I just freaking hate myself because I'm overweight, or every time I try, I fail, or you know what, I, I just feel like a perpetual loser. I'm a yo-yo dieter, I've done this a zillion times. They're just done with it, they're done with themselves, you know what I mean? Um, if y'all are new to the Chief Tish tribe, um, I've gone to hell and back uh, at war with myself. Um, I don't think anybody could punk me like I punked myself. So for me trying to do anything that makes me be better, feel better was really challenging for a long time. Anything that was anything loving to me was really challenging to me for a while. So, um, I, I brought an analogy forth, um, that I used to work with, with a woman the other day and I wanted to share it. Uh, I told her that she's been, um, she's a Lamborghini and She's been in the garage, but she was told she was a Pinto, okay? So if you were, um, you know, there's some things that, oh my God, my dog's killing me. I think I'm going to have to put her up because she's just driving me nuts and she's distracting me. I'm sorry. Just a minute, please. I apologize. Hold. Hey, come. Come. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so if we there's some things that we hold as standard, right? And we don't have we don't have a hard time accepting the scale of measurement or the standard when it applies to something else. But when it comes to us, it's a whole different story. So if I told you, I mean, like it would not be hard for you to understand that a pento takes one kind of gas. Excuse me. It's usually capable, unless you soup up the engine or do some crazy crap. I don't know. I'm not a car girl. So um, if you, if you, a, a Pinto takes one type of gas and it has capable of a certain, um, capacity and, you know, um, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, uh, measurement of speed. And everybody would say, yeah, yeah, I know that, right? And then you'd say the Lamborghini that takes different gas. Do you treat that car differently? Um, you understand that it is capable of a completely different type of performance. And you just understand that. It has value. It has worth in it, right? And so you would treat it as such. You would never put bullshit gas in your Lamborghini and be like, why the hell did my car run like shit? It's, it's. You know, like, it's the car. No, you put bullshit gas in your car. You jacked up the car, right? And you would understand that. And you would understand that there's a code of living that comes with this car if you want it to operate like it's supposed to. You would also understand that if you put that Lamborghini in the garage for five years and pulled it out, it's still a Lamborghini. Guess what? Put it in there for 10, it's still a Lamborghini. We could go on. You get the point, right? The car holds value. The car is inherently a Lamborghini that runs on a certain type of gas and performs a certain type of way. And we all get it, right? But then when it comes to you, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to use a specific example. And she knows I love her. She knows I love her with all my heart. <laughs> because she and I are the same. Because she and I are the same. And I rejected anything and everything that was trying to make me love myself and help me for a really long time. Until I didn't. And now she's not. She's here. So... Anyway, that's kind of just for her and I. Anyway, um, so if I say to her, why are you walking four miles a day when it's making your ankle sore and um, you're trying to eat less and you're not sleeping well and you're feeling like you don't like yourself and, and then her answer to that would probably be because I got to walk more and I got to eat less and I got to get this weight off, she said, right? And so it becomes this perpetual cycle because that's the way we've been taught. It's all about calories in and calories out. And I got to just do more. And if I eat less, it'll, it'll happen. But what ends up happening is we're not eating enough fat. We're expending too many calories. And we're not taking in either the nutrients and the nourishment or the amount or all of that that we need. And so our brains are literally starving. So we hate ourselves. We hate everything around us. Our body is going, holy crap. I don't get enough to basically even function. So it goes into what's called a catabolic state and it holds on to everything at that point because it's like, yeah, bump this. I'm not going to get enough. I have to hold on to everything she eats because she's starving us and this is madness because see your body has its own intelligence. Yes, it does. It's conscious. It's beautiful, beautiful, always working for you. I know you know that because you know it breathes and your heart always beats. <laughs> Those are simple, but there's like a whole bunch of functions running in there. You know, when you freak out and you like go like a T-Rex straight for the chocolate and you think you have poor self-discipline, that's your body's way of saying, yo, Holmes, you ain't taking enough calories. We going to get some right now. And then you're going to come like blast us afterwards and be all pissed off, but we're getting what we need because it knows when it's starving. And so many of us have been taught that you know, we should cut the carbs and cut the fat. And so we see meals that are a chicken breast and green beans, right? And there's not enough basic fuel in that to cushion and support your organs, which run on some of those carbohydrates, but mostly on the fat. So if we're not taking in as much as we need and we're putting out with our with our workouts, with our walking, with our interacting with our family, with our, if, we, if we're beating up on ourselves, it takes up a lot of energy. I'm not joking, it does. You, you expend a lot of energetic, it's called kilocals, being at war with yourself. Mm hmm Yes. Yes. So, it's, uh, it's more, in fact, I wanted to tell you one more thing. I remember when I learned that um, sumo wrestlers eat once a day. I think this is so cool. They eat, they have this big, huge meal, then they just sit around afterwards. So the body, it go, it starts, it's shunting. <laughs> I love this word. I learned that word a couple years ago. I just think it's a fun word. It's when, you know, all the blood goes to the stomach and it starts digesting because it's not like, like my body, my body, I have the metabolism of a Trojan horse. Like, 
I consume, um, I haven't charted my calories recently, but the last time I did, it was well over 3,000 a day, and I was chilling at 6.5% body fat. And I always have the energy for everything I want. I always have the body I want. Um, I like myself. I really love myself, actually, now. And I love life. So I think that means something. Anyway, um, I have been fanning this metabolism just like you fan a fire i've been feeding it this entire time and so now i have this metabolism that i eat um during the windows that i eat rather steadily i eat during certain intervals and i eat a lot um so i'm really really fueled so my body is like oh she's eating let's do it oh she's eating let's do it oh she's eating let's do it let's digest Let's assimilate those calories. Let's break it down. Let's get them going where they're supposed to go. I mean, like, my system is like, whoo, clockwork, right? We do this all day, every day, you know? But if you only eat once a day and you eat a great big amount of food, the body's like, whoa, all systems on alert. Incoming and it's not going to be for another 24, right? So everything's like system shut down. Everybody's paying attention. And it's like everybody's in the stomach. Everybody's paying attention. And the body goes into what's called a catabolic state where the body holds on to all of that. So instead of, and it's a double whammy, it's a double whammy because number one, all of those calories and nutrients get stored as fat. And then number two, they don't go where they need to go. So the body doesn't get what it needs to get when it needs to be fed and it needs to be regularly fed. Because even if you're not up and running around a track, you're doing a lot of stuff. Your body is always working for you. And the more you learn to tune into that and to feed it as such, the more brilliantly beautiful your body will be because it will respond in kind. So um, I said I would answer about the keto diet. Um, we've been taught that we need a whole bunch of protein um, and it's really wrecking our kidneys. First of all, first of all, Protein comes from the 20 essential amino acids, 10 of which occur in your body naturally, 10 you need to get in your diet. Your body makes protein the same way a cow does, the same way a rhinoceros, hippopotamus, elephant, and all the other most muscular beings, creatures on this planet that are herbivores, same way they do, same way a cow does. Your body makes protein the same way a cow does, okay? So that's the first thing you want to know. You need to consume the 20 essential amino acids or you can eat them secondhand in an animal who's been shot up with a whole bunch of crap and that body has done it for you. That'll be a separate video. Um, so then it's also interesting to learn like when we, when we start to find out where the... <sighs> funding for a lot of the studies and the education and indoctrination that we've been given. I said I wouldn't go there, but I did it. <laughs> um, we have a lot of the research and studies that have come forth have been funded um, by supporters of um, the meat industry and the dairy industry. Um, and so a lot of what we've learned about our protein requirements have been fueled by an industry that is perpetuated by us buying more of these products. So first of all, you don't need near, first of all, you, first of all, your body makes its own protein from 20 essential amino acids. Let's recap on that. 10 come in, 10 are in your system, 10 are in your body and 10 occur naturally in your body. 10, you got to get outside your body and your food sources. Okay. Number two, you don't need as much protein. It's actually really hard on our kidneys. Um, I remember when I started bodybuilding, I learned that I needed a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Oh my gosh. And I ate like that. I used, I used to eat two pounds of meat a day before a bodybuilding show. Okay. And it's funny. I was never as lean. I was never as strong. I was never as agile with as good a recovery as I am now. And I haven't had meat since 2016. So, um, and I'm getting, you know, I'm gaining earth years. So those two things don't line up, do they? Uh, as far as what I learned in my education and my nutrition, um, classes. So, um, uh, I, I consume a whole, I, I, the protein ratio now that I eat is much different 
the the protein to fat to carbohydrate ratio is different. I feel it's much more balanced. Um, I think it's yeah, it's a lot of stress on our kidneys, um, and the long term effects are really detrimental. Um, putting that kind of you know, I I think about even fundamentally. Let me just go here. I think about the way that we are so easily swayed anymore in terms of fads about our health, which are completely contradictory to basic biology, okay? But the problem is nobody knows anything about their basic biology. Nobody has any freaking clue about how their body works on the most fundamental level. So these studies come out and these fads come out and these diets come out and everybody's like, oh, that, this, this said this and this said this and this is great. And if you have some results to begin with, well, then I guess game on. But I don't know. I always cared about what it was going to do to my organs later, you know? I mean, I remember when I started bodybuilding, I remember thinking I was <laughs> someone, you know, I, I'm a natural athlete. Uh, I went professional in 2009 and I'm a drug-free athlete. Um, I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic. So no, I didn't do any juice. <laughs> and someone asked me once, um, you know, you always got the results you wanted with your body. If you didn't, would you have considered it? I said, you know, it's such a great question. I never thought about that because I did. I always got the muscular and the physical development that I wanted. Um, at the same time, um, I've always played with my body uh, to me, you know, to see which results, you know, I can get that are the most ideal. Um, but I remember at that time thinking, even if I wanted a physical, uh, if I wanted to attain physical goals that I didn't think I could naturally, I didn't want to jack up my organs later in life. You know, I, I really wanted to, um, be healthy and be beautiful later in life, you know? So, um, I think some of these fads are really dangerous to our long-term health. I think it's essential to get back to our basic biology. Um, I think it's really, it just, it's, it's, it's essential to, to, um, to learn about what we need on the most basic fundamental levels to, to fuel our bodies as humans. You know, how are you, how, how should we be living on planet earth that fuels us in beneficial ways? Um, and, and, and I don't think some of these, I mean, some of these fads, specifically keto, no. I think keto is extremely uh, detrimental for your health, specifically through your kidneys. And then, and then the secondary, what's the word I want to use? Mm. I don't want to say damage, that's a harsh word, but whatever, like, it starts in the kidneys. And then there's a trickle-down effect that comes from any one system. In fact, look at my little chart here. From any one system that gets... See my little thing there? We're talking about right here. So once we have one system that starts to get affected, okay, you're going to have the others. This is a matter of time. The body is, a, is an energetic highway. So you can't jack with one organ system and think that you're going to remain all right, you know? just doesn't happen. So, um, I think that maybe you want to start paying attention to who's looking good and feeling energetic for years. I mean, we're talking decades now, baby. Hey, <laughs> you know, I remember when I was little, this is so funny. I remember when I was little, I used to look at people who, in my eyes, when I, when I was small, who embodied good energy, who I thought were beautiful, who I like, I think in, in when I was small, I like could feel their charisma, right? And I remember thinking, I wonder if I ate what they ate and did what they did, if I would look like they looked. I remember thinking this when I was little, right? And I remember talking about it to my mom and my mom thinking it was funny that I came up with that. But I share that because look at the athletes. Look at the athletes that you've watched in whatever sport it is. We could take football. We could take fighting. We could take golf, we could take soccer, uh, who was I just thinking about, um, bodybuilding, right? Look at the athletes that you've followed in whatever sport as they have aged. How are they feeling? How are they looking? Are they still alive? Are they coherent? Do they have seizures? Do they know their families? Or do they have multiple concussions? 
right? Like, start paying attention to how people have fueled their bodies and how it is benefiting or not benefiting them over time, right? Like, you know, all this stuff is related. When I hear a nutritionist at this point talking about their endometriosis and imbalance in these organ systems, but they're talking about how their macros and their calories are on point, I'm like, yo, you're missing part of the ball game here. Because nutrition is everything we take in, all right? And it's all what's going on inside. It's your organ systems. It's how your skin looks, y'all. It's not just having a nice ass and some sweet abs, okay? That's why I show you my skin. That's why I show you my body. And it's been this way for a long time now, hasn't it? That's a whole lot of balance, isn't it? So, I mean, you know, it's what 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 good is it if you've got a dime ass <laughs> and tight arms and tight this, but your kidneys are shutting down or your eyes aren't super white anymore, um, you know, because your your energy is starting to be affected, right? Or you have a entire body candida imbalance. That's the case with a whole lot of fitness women. That was the case with me for a long time. My whole body had like a giant yeast infection, right? And some of you are like, oh my God, I can't believe she went there. I'm not, and I will go there. I'm not even talking about specifically vaginal. I'm talking about a yeast imbalance in my whole body because of the way that I was eating, the way that I was training, probably some of the supplements that I was taking. Like it, and that's a common thing for um, a lot of women in that um, in that lifestyle. So um, it's what comes in our mouths, it's what comes in our noses, it's what comes through our skin. That's why I make all my own skin products. That's why I only use what I make. It's, it's everything that comes in. So, um, and I'll make, you know, we'll talk more about that on the future. Um, I'm gonna pull a card. If you guys have any questions, I can hang out for a few and I can answer some questions if anybody has questions for me. Oh, I should also tell you, <laughs> I need some work on my sales skills. Let me do your card first. When I'm connected to my joyful presence, I, su I attract support from the universe. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I have discounts available for nutrition programs, fitness programs, putting them both together working them in my village. Um, if you are interested in learning to take better care of yourself, if you're interested in learning how to eat and be in a way that you can do for the rest of your life, then send me an email. You can send it to chiefdisliving at gmail.com. Um, and I would love to help you. Um, but yeah, I do have um, discounts going till the end of the year. I think we're going to do some because uh, this, you know, when the holidays come, <laughs> that's when everybody needs so much help. Things get so challenging, right? Mm. I need to give you this recipe and tell you why I do this. Okay. Can you see my glass? Do you see how it's like super yellow? I don't want to pour this on the ground, but anyway, that's why I have to drink water afterwards and rinse my teeth. I make a tea. It's called Healer Tea. It's on my website. I'll also put the link there. Oh, goodness. Um, and it's filled with turmeric and spices. And so it's so strong. So I have to rinse my teeth afterwards. So I think it's going to stain my teeth. <laughs> so I always drink afterwards. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can email me. If you're interested in help with your fitness and nutrition, um, send an email to chiefdessliving at gmail.com. And... I will be back. I'm going to start making more of these videos um, and just leaving them here. I will also upload to YouTube. Please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. I have to get a certain amount of YouTube followers so I can go live. So help me out and go there. And then um, once I get a certain amount, oh my gosh, I think I'm like eight away from that amount. Yeah, I think I only need eight more followers and then I promised you a free, what am I trying to say? Personal care product recipe. Um, I make all kinds of personal care products. I make really cool stuff. You can go to www.thechiefdis, 
Com, and you can get chemical free all organic personal care products charged with bioscalar energy um, each of my products makes your body immune from Wi-Fi cell phone and ELF wave interference for 2.5 days per application yes I'll say it again every time you use one of these products check this out I should show you this really quick okay so I don't have anything to spray um, let's say like my son comes home from soccer and his shin guards are like super stinky, right? Or we're leaving the soccer field the other day. So I, I spray the, 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 the shin guard, right? Like with this and stuff. And then, um, like if I've been at the gym, I spray my phone and then I can spray my skin. You can spray your face with this. You can spray in your mouth. It doesn't taste good though. So I'm not going to do it. I did it before, but this is my antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral cleaning spray. Um, it is also charged with bioscalar energy, so you can clean your field with these. Yes, meaning your, your energetic field, like clean your aura with all of my products. And every time you use any of these products, your body is immune from Wi-Fi, cell phone, and ELF wave interference for 2.5 days per application. Yes, because you're a beautiful frequency, swimming in frequency soup, and there's a whole bunch of frequencies spinning around us. Some are beneficial for ours and some are not. And so if we increase our personal vibration and feed our cells, balancing our systems, then um, we are immune from the low vibrators. That's what I like to call them. Yes. <laughs> so you can buy my products at www.thechiefdest.com and my YouTube channel is The Chiefdest. You can search The Chiefdest. I'll go back in the um, description and put these links in here. If I miss one, send me a message because uh, I do sometimes, especially when I say I'll do that. So looks like I'm giving you healer tea recipe. I'll put my YouTube link in here. I'll put the link to my boutique where you can go buy um, healthy products that make your body immune. And I'm going to make videos on this stuff too because those of you who have like stickers on the back of your cell phone or if you're wearing a scalar pendant, it doesn't generate its own field. So it only blocks what it's covering, right? So if you've got a pendant, then it's covering like right there. So you need like a big ass pendant. <laughs> you need like a flavor flavor pendant. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's so funny. That's like a science joke. <laughs> oh my God. And you're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes. My brother would be dogging me out right now. <laughs> anyway, um, scalar pendants don't generate their own field. So my products use the water in, my pro in, in the product and the water in your body. So you increase and generate, you, you generate your own field. You have your own field. And this um, charges and increases the vibration of your personal body on the cellular level and the electromagnetic field around you. I know that's a whole mouthful, so I'll give it to you in another video. Um, all right, unless y'all have more questions for me, I'm out of here. So thanks so much for joining me today and I'll put the links in there and um, please send me messages and let me know what you would like for me to talk about next. I had so many questions this week about this stuff, so this was awesome and it makes it easy for me because then I know what you want to hear. So if you have questions, please send them to me at chiefdisliving at gmail.com and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. I love you. I love you. I love you.